Hi and welcome! In this video we're going to start talking about the matrix equation AX equals B. So thus far, as we've been talking about systems of equations, we've been using augmented matrices. So we've had a system that maybe looks like x plus 3y equals 7, and then negative 4x plus 2y equals 8. So this would be a system of two linear equations, and then what we've been doing to solve this type of system is by writing it as an augmented matrix. So when we do that, we would write 1, 3, 7, with the 7 on the right-hand side of a vertical bar, and then negative 4, 2, 8 for the second row. So we would put each equation in a row of this matrix, and we put the vertical bar to represent the equal sign. So how we've been doing it so far is just fine, but we want to start thinking about using matrices in a new way, specifically moving away from using the augmented matrices and just using a matrix itself. So what we're going to do is take the coefficients and write them in the first matrix. So we'll have 1, 3, negative 4, 2. And then we're going to write this as a multiplication by a second vector. And the vector is going to contain the variables from the system, so x and y. You can think of this as the solutions to the system. So whatever the solutions would be, the x and y values, they go in this vector. Then we're going to actually write an equal sign to make an equation and put the values that we're getting an equal to, the b values, on the other side, so 7 and 8. In doing this, we no longer have an augmented matrix, and we, this is a condensed version of our system. So part of how we can make sense of this is to think of doing a multiplication, and so we can think of taking the first row of the coefficient matrix and doing a dot product with the xy vector. So when we do this, we would get 1x plus 3y, and that would be then equal to 7. We would repeat this process with the second row. So we would do a dot product of the second row with the xy vector. We'd get negative 4x plus 2y, and that would be equal to 8. So we don't really typically spend too much time talking about the dot product in this setting, but it's just one way where you can kind of relate this back to something you've seen before. We formalize this later when we talk about matrix multiplication, but we start here with just this equation AX equals B, where we're taking a matrix and multiplying it by a vector. So we can also think of this more formally in terms of column vectors. So that would look like our original system, but instead of writing the numbers, we can think of the first column as vector one and the second column as vector two. So in this way, we're taking the first column, that v1 vector, and multiplying it by x, and adding it to the second vector times y. So it's a linear combination of the vectors v1 and v2. Then we can think of the right-hand side of the equation as our b vector. And then when we go to replace our vectors back with the system we started with, we would have 1, negative 4 times x, 3, 2 times y, and that would be equal to 7, 8. And you can see how this interpretation also aligns with the version of the system we started with. So this is just another way for us to consider systems of equations in terms of this matrix equation, where we have the coefficient matrix and the vectors. So in general, the equation AX equals B represents the following. So when we write this out, we think of A as an M by N matrix. So A is comprised of n column vectors, and each of those column vectors, V1 through Vn, is an element of Rm, so it has m entries. This makes the matrix A an m by n matrix. Then, to, for our x vector, we think of x as being an element of Rn, and it needs to be an element of Rn so that the multiplication works. So x is a vector x1 through xn, in our example, we used x and y, but the idea is that these are our variables, and we specifically want one variable for each column of A. So in a system of equations, we have a certain number of variables, and we put the coefficients of those variables in the columns. So that's why we need a vector that has the same number of entries as there are columns in the matrix A. Then when we write AX, this is representing an operation where we have the matrix A times the vector X, and we take the columns of A and multiply them by each of the variables. 
So we do v1 times x1 plus v2 times x2 all the way through vn times xn. And this resulting vector is our b vector, and it's going to have m components. So it's going to be a vector since we're summing up a set of vectors. The vectors v1 through vn that we're taking a linear combination of, each of those has m elements, right? The matrix A was m by n, it had m rows. And so the resulting vector b will also have m rows, which as a vector just means it has m components. So this is the theoretical understanding of this concept. We will unpack it more with some examples, but doing this just gives us a new way to think about matrices and to think about our systems of equations. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.